welcome to Southeast Michigan and Dr. Russ's Air Rifle Adventures. I think we're going to have a little fun today. We're definitely going to step back in history. Let me just show you. Both of these guns are big competitors. The manufacturers are big competitors of each other. This being a Crossman, this being a Gamo, these uh, in most part being made in, uh, in New York, these being made in Spain. They're both 22 caliber and they both have what I think are important first. Let me explain. Gamo here came out with uh, uh, a 10X model that's very, very important to air gunning. Uh, this allowed a magazine to be put right in here and while you still have to break the barrel and copy or rather uh, 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 cock each uh, shot up to 10 uh, you don't have to hand load it uh, that's what Gamo brought to the table a number of years ago and they they had generation 1 and this is a generation 1 whisper I'll get to more on it in a minute they've come out with generation 2 and this summer they're coming out with generation 3 and I promise to share what I know about generation 3 when that happens. Let's come over here to this Crossman. Crossman came out with the nitro piston and what that meant was a piston inside here that has compressed I think it's nitrogen air in it and uh, uh, this allowed more power um, overall a better gun than what was permitted before and that was a, a, a cocking whether it be a side lever or front lever it was a, an air gun that was called a springer and the spring was in a piston and it was the spring that uh, pushed the pellet out while uh, compressed air on the other side of the compressed gas uh, allowed the uh, nitro piston to work Today, Gamo has a, uh, a similar piston in it, as do many, many other air rifles. Uh, it's important, I think, to note that the nitro piston came to us at two levels. The first one was a nitro piston, or NP, period. And that came out in 2020. It was around about four years. Then it was replaced by the nitro piston two. What was the difference? Well, the Nitro Piston 1 had a huge kickback and uh, uh, it also had a lot of rubbing metal parts that created a vibration in the gun. Uh, come 2004, they came out with the Nitro Piston 2 and that's basically the piston that most guns have. I don't know if Crossman licensed them or they made enough changes to have their own. I'm not that much of an engineer to tell you that. But I can tell you that uh, it's, it revolutionized the air gun industry with the nitro piston. This happens to be a Crossman Titan, one of those first NP, just that one made between 2000 and 2004. Both guns came with a scope. This is a, a four power and a 30 millimeter objective lens. And that's often the type of scope you get when it's thrown in on the package deal. Uh, I believe this Crossman came with a 3 by 9 by 32 objective lens. I quickly take, I haven't done it off this one yet, but uh, I like these uh, uh, AOs, they call them. Uh, uh, that one's a, there we go. That allow this front to to uh, twist and give you different levels or rather different yardages to shoot at uh, and that clarifies the picture and makes it more accurate back here at the back uh, this happens to be a scope that starts at six and a half and let's see I think it goes clear up to about 20 so six and a half by 20 and finally you get a another part that turns back here and that allows you to focus the gun in. Uh, good improvement. Both guns come with a, a nice neoprene back. I don't think it's needed. They're every bit as good as a powder gun 
powder guns have a kickback. Air guns, to me, just don't. Uh, Crossman puts a, a white line on all their guns. Gamo puts a, a green, I think, on the, the guns that are really designed to shoot critters. And I think that's a red one that they put when it's uh, pretty much designed for target. Um, down here, I think is important. It's kind of an evolution of the magazines that go into guns. Right here, this one, with a red internal drum, this goes into Gamo Generation 1. And that's what I have here, is a Gamo Whisper, a Swarm Whisper. It uses this for shooting the 22. Uh, then Gamo came out with Generation 2 and is quickly determined because it has a white internals uh, and it's just shaped a little bit different. Unfortunately, you can't use them interchangeably. This is strictly for Gamo Generation 2, this is strictly for Generation 1. It's going to be important this summer when Gamo brings out their uh, three, they didn't call it Generation 3, they call it Generation 3i. I'm not sure what the I stands for, but I hope that they don't change the magazine again. What in the world then is this magazine? Now you can see the 22 right there. Uh, and you see a C, I put that with a, a silver magic marker. And it looks considerably different than these two. This is for Crossman and Crossman copying the big uh, move that Gamo brought to the market uh, with a multi-fire. They call it the Crossman Magfire, Magfire. In today's comparison, I'm using uh, JSB Diablos. I always use a heavy pellet, uh, in this case, 22. Well, why do I do that? Well, often in 17 caliber, and 22 caliber, and I'm covering almost everybody in the industry. I don't think Hatson's quite as bad, but these two companies are. They'll advertise 1,500 feet a second. I think the, the new ones coming this summer are 1,600 feet per second. And I think it still has the Mach 1 uh, uh, piston in it. They call theirs Mach 1. Uh, so who knows what's going to be in it this year, uh, this summer. Um, but they overstate it. And often the buyers buy into that. And I'm sorry that they do, because speed is not where it's at. Sweet spot is where it's at. When you get a pellet going way too fast, it doesn't go straight to the target. It just does one big spiral. I've, you can put some white nail polish, a little uh, a modeling paintbrush, into the back cup of the pellet. And uh, right back in there. And you can see it. You definitely can see it on a camera. And sometimes you can see it with your eye. But you'll see the pellet. And man, when they're up over a thousand feet a second, they're doing some swirling action. It's just too much air behind this, uh, in that skirted area. This is called the waistband, and this is the dome. Um, and too much air isn't good. Somewhere between 725 and 975 is the, is the sweet spot. Now, another thing you need to know about pellets is that one pellet might be 22, one might be 22.1, 22.2, 22.3, and that means it's just a little bigger. Some have a thick skirt, and some have a thin skirt. The thin skirt can enlarge with the air pushing it and seal off that barrel better. The thicker ones uh, have a little more trouble doing that. But the thinner ones have to be examined. And one of the things you do with, uh, with uh, pellets is you look them over to try to find the bad ones because it doesn't take much jostling to get that skirt not to be round anymore. You don't want to shoot those, at least not in any sort of competition. I've shot uh, black powder, uh, not black powder, but powder gun competition 
for a number of years, I don't know, 10 years I was shooting. I've got some trophies, I'll show them to you one day. I've never shot air gun competition, but the same things are, are always in place. Another thing is uh, uh, when you're using these air guns, is I think that these brake barrels, which are excellent survivor guns, survival guns, you know, I've lost power here at my home for up to five days. And <laughs> we had a, a daughter who was bringing a new baby into this world, and that was not the time. I had all kinds of things I had to come up with to heat the house and to light the house up during that problem. Well, uh, unless you had uh, uh, some sort of scuba tank that could keep guns aired up, PCP air guns up, it was doggone good that you had uh, a brake barrel. That's a great survival gun. We shot a couple of destructive critters that week. We shoot a couple of destructive critters every week. In fact, I'll show you a couple of them here in a minute that uh, we shot. Uh, I don't need to tell you which one of these two rifles shot the two destructive critters today because as it turns out, and you can see here uh, on this uh, end, that's an FX chronograph. And uh, it very accurately tells me how fast that pellet's going. Would you believe that both of these air rifles sh show a speed uh, a velocity of the 22 caliber pellet at 644 and 645. It's not important which one it is uh, because if I change the pellet, the two numbers might switch. Uh, but they were averaging, you know, up to 1,500, 1,200 feet per second. That's it. with alloy pellets, 1,100 feet per second with lead. Now you want heavy lead and heavy stays on course. Why is heavy better? Well, for one thing, it's better because these guns have an enemy. That enemy is wind. Now, I'm sure you've seen on your television some weatherman, and he's standing out there in some storm, and he's standing here like this, or with a microphone in front, and he's being buffeted by this, you know, 70 mile an hour wind. Well, these guns encounter more than a 70 mile an hour wind and they can jostle in the air too. So I want heavy. Plus, I want the heaviness to bring down the velocity into that 720 to 975 feet because that's where they seem to go into the wind properly. Now, I don't use, uh, I don't use hollow heads. Uh, hollow heads come from our powder world of pistols, and boy, do they do damage with pistols. But when you're talking about a rifle shooting 75 yards, 100, 200 yards out, I don't think, I don't think you want a hollow head. Imagine if I had a top hat, and it had a hole here in it, like a hollow head, and I'm standing in front of this wind, what it might do, trying to move forward, with that big hollow part up there. Sometimes my wife says I have a hole in my head anyway, but uh, that's not what you want your pellet to do. Nonetheless, I've had a dozen Crossman guns and the best pellet for them was a Crossman hollow head. How did, how did I put that discussion with the one I just had with you? And the answer is, unlike all the rest of the hollow heads out there, take a good look. I don't have one in front of me here, but the Crossman hollow head is tiny. It's just a tiny one. And it's just, it's, it's a dimple, really. Might as well have just called it a dimple ammunition. And it's a slightly different weight than their dome. So a lot of guns will shoot the Crossman hollow heads the best. But outside of that, I'm not big on hollow heads. I've got the Zeus 72 caliber. It shoots a slug the size of this thumb. I've had trouble getting that in anything except a hollow head. I don't like that. I wish it wasn't true. Once I get a good source, I'm going to, uh, to make sure that I use a nice what they call a round nose, 
a boat tail, but any of the more standard pellets or slugs that don't have a hollow head in them. So, both of these guns shoot at the same velocity within a foot. Uh, the same velocity. This one has a, uh, a better uh, scope on it. I try to make any shooting comparisons equal. I really do. I don't get paid by anybody, so I'm not interested in, in uh, misleading you in any stretch of my imagination. I really don't. I've got 25 guns in all kinds of calibers and uh, uh, brands, and uh, uh, I have certain ones I like for certain reasons. <coughs> 25 is my favorite caliber, but I've got every caliber. Why is 25 my favorite caliber? These brake barrels come in 22. Hatson has one that comes in a 30. Um, but why, why would I be interested in 25 caliber? Because it brings down the critters for the backyard I have. And that's really one of the things that will help you determine what uh, caliber you have to plink in your backyard. Now, if we're gonna go deer hunting, elk hunting, bear hunting, wild boar hunting, and I do all of those, I want something bigger. I don't even use the 30. I use a 357, 45, 50. I haven't used that Zeus yet, but I will. I will in time. Now, I hope that gives you a good background. Uh, let me just say a couple more things. This Gamel is lightweight, about six and a half pounds. And of course, this is a wood stock, but this uh, Crossman, I think in the poly stock was around eight and a half and the wood is about nine and a half. So it's heavier. Also remember <laughs> that on any Springer especially, but nitro piston or piston uh, Gamel, we want to use the artillery position. That's where we hold it very light and it moves very lightly in our hands so that it can do this. By the way, that's what makes, that's the difference between a regular scope for a powder gun and a scope made for uh, uh, air. I think the scopes made for air are better than the scopes made for powder. Why? because they're made to do this, this artillery position. Now, people talk about this artillery position all the time. Let me use a different word to help you understand. I've been around artillery. You may not understand artillery. Let me give you a word you'll understand. Consistency. It's very, very important. Why is consistency important? because this pellet doesn't go down that barrel at two and three thousand feet a second like it does a powder gun. It's going at 500, 600, 700, 800, 1,000 feet. That means slower. And that means as it's slowly going down this barrel, who knows what the barrel's gonna do? So if we hold it light and consistently and let this gun just do its thing, that's the closest thing we can get to an accurate, consistent shot group. And uh, that's why they talk about the artillery. Now, if you get on into the PCPs, they don't quite have that problem. Velocity's picked up, and uh, they don't have that same jerking that the uh, uh, piston and the springers have in them. Let's take a look at a couple of critters I shot this morning. If I'm correct, most of you want to know more about the Gamo Generation 3 or 3i more than anything today. Uh, let me tell you what I know. The SHOT Show, which takes place in January every year in Las Vegas, uh, is limited to I was able to get in because I do these videos and they thought we were popular enough to let us in. But uh, they're really for dealers and for manufacturers. And Gamo last year was the biggest uh, seller of air guns, I'm told, than Crossman or anybody else. And it was their swarm package that helped them be first place. 
and then they went missing in January. This huge area for them, nobody's there. And so a lot of us are kind of scratching our heads. Why? And then we get word that a third generation's coming out. I can tell you what I know about it, and I can tell you what I think about it. Uh, first of all, uh, there is no better value. If you want to talk about what do I get for a dollar, there's no better value than a, 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 a Whisper uh, Generation 1. These guns cost 150 bucks, and they're literally as good as the Generation 2. Um, particularly when they have this moderated barrel. Now these grooves have no function at all. This is what powder guns have to keep the barrel cool. But there are baffles, and I don't know how many baffles in, but up here is what they call uh, an air breaker, and it takes some of the pressure as the pellet is ready to leave, it takes some of that air pressure behind it and noise and sends it back down this barrel. Uh, one of the things you need to do, I haven't done it yet, but take one of the smallest drills you have and just put a hole there because this air needs to have a way to work itself out past those baffles and the sound goes down in the baffles better. I know if you get a, an air gun from a tuner, he's put that hole in there. Uh, but this gun uh, shoots excellent. It does have a high mount for these 10x magazines. Well, that means you've got to have a high mount for your scope back here. And that's not such a bad deal, get a high mount. Some want see-through mount so they can use uh, for iron sights, not on this gun, but on other guns. So high mounts are available out there, usually for a gun that someone can use a scope and then get down low and use the iron sights too. So the mounts are there. This comes with the high mounts, it comes with this scope. Uh, Crossman had a high mount for theirs um, uh, on their mag fires that have come out. And uh, uh, use those, don't keep the cheap scopes, I, at least I don't, uh, that they have. But let me tell you about the Whisper. Uh, Gamo has more doggone guns with the name Whisper in it. I'm tough. Whisper Fusion, Whisper This, Whisper That. I, they use it. Why do they use that name? Well, they're saying it's more quiet. This is a gun that's quieter. And uh, whether it's a baffled, moderated barrel, <coughs> or something that looks like a silencer on the front, a suppressor, but it's not. Uh, they, uh, they just put a piece of hollow plastic on and they call that a suppressor, sometimes a moderator. Go on eBay and you can find more baffles. And uh, I don't know that I'd go to any expense. I know uh, Donnie FL, it's very, very big, probably the biggest suppressor manufacturer in the US. They don't make them for brake barrels. And I asked Donnie, why? And he said, uh, you know, you only spend 150, 250 for the gun, you're gonna spend that much for a suppressor that just barely brings down the sound because it isn't very noisy to begin with. Where suppressors are needed are 25 calibers and up. And more expensive guns, uh, PCPs that start at 400, 500, 1,000, 3,000 dollars. So that's where your real suppressor, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get real concerned about suppressors with brake barrels. Now I've had a few people uh, comment and say, I've got to have it to make my backyard friendly. I'm all for backyard friendly. So what can I suggest? Well, you can make a wood box and you can line it with uh, foam, carpet, uh, cardboard, and just as you're shooting, you stick that into the, the muzzle into that cardboard, which is open at this end, it's open at that end. Look through your sights and shoot. And that square box will take a lot of noise that could have gone sideways. Now that gun is, is air gun friendly. Let me talk more about this generation three that we think is coming this summer. I've got a couple of notes here. Uh, they're, they're not calling that, that piston in there uh, an IGT. I'm not sure what that stood for, but IGT. They're calling it a Mach 1. Maybe it has something to do with how 
Prosman went from an NP or nitro piston to a nitro piston too, I'm not sure. But they're using this word Mach 1 and they're making it in the bone collector. Now the bone collector, a uh, guy named Waddell on uh, hunting uh, videos, uh, hunting channel, he put his name on a, a bunch of these gamos with a wood stock. And uh, I've, I've had one on order now for oh, a month. And I just got word that they came into stock and I'll soon get one. I'm interested in that gun. It's heavy. Uh, I like that. It's, it's uh, only going to be available in 22. And then they've got the Swarm Magnum. And I understand those two guns are going to share the same piston. Might be wrong. These are just the rumors. But it is a, a hard-hitting piston. And if that's true, I'm going to have to use very heavy 22 caliber pellets to slow it down. Um, they're going to have the Maxim, which is one of their best selling of the whole Swarm family. I have the Maxim. I think it's the most accurate gamo I have. And uh, they're going to have the uh, Fusion. They're taking that Whisper gun out. That was the lower priced one so that now they're higher priced. Now, everything I've told you is pretty close to fact. Let me tell you what I think. Um, you only come along once in a lifetime and you bring air guns up a notch, like Crossman did with the Nitro Piston, like Gamo has done with these uh, 10X multiple shot magazines. You only get a couple of those in your lifetime. Gamo has one and they're using it. And in three years or four years, they've come out with three generations. And I keep seeing them get more expensive, but not a whole lot better, if any, than the previous generation. Um, so beware of that. Uh, don't hesitate to get the cheaper guns. And, and when the new ones come out, the, the other ones drop in price right away. So be prepared to, to do that. Uh, that's why I went ahead and I ordered the Generation 2 Gamel rather than wait a couple more months and get the Generation 3 Gamo Bone Collector, even with Mike Waddell's name on it. Uh, they're moving up from just a four power to a three by nine variable, uh, but still like a 32, not like a 50 that I have on this uh, Benjamin here. Uh, I want a big optic on the end because I can shoot earlier in the morning and late at night because more light is coming in, more light. Um, it still has a two-stage trigger. So does the Crossman. I, you know, what is a two-stage trigger? Well, you pull part way, easy, and then you get to some resistance, and then you shoot. That sounds good. Not so good on these Gamo and Crossman guns. Because when you still get to that resistance, you've got to start pulling hard. The gun has the ability to move on you before it goes off. And the best I was able to tune either a Crossman or a Gamma was around a five pound pull before the gun would go off. When I shoot competitively, uh, I want that gun somewhere, but that trigger, somewhere between a one and a two pound. In other words, when I think, that's when it goes off. And that's what I want. When I come onto that bullseye, and I think about, oh, it'd be nice to get a bullet right in the middle, boom, it goes off. And the gun's not moving because it's just a hair trigger. That's, uh, that's what I like. I'll be interested to see if the Generation 3 has truly adjustable, that work, two-stage triggers. I'm concerned that they don't. Um, the uh, Whisper, I'm not sure what the uh, long-range plan. I think they're just going to make some Whispers by themselves. But in terms of this Swarm family, it's going to be Maxim, and, which is kind of a middle price, Swarm and Magnum, and then the Magnum and the Bone Collector. Uh, Woodstock versus a polyurethane stock, something, something in that category. They're wanting to raise these prices while the going's good. 
makes those presidents and CEOs look good. I can assure you that. Okay, let's see what kind of a group these guns shoot. When you cock these game uh, we're cocking somewhere around 30 to 32 foot-pounds. Um, we want as long of a barrel as we like. I told you the M16 in Vietnam, they did a lot of studies on that and they want a 20 inch barrel for the spiraling to be long enough to stay on target. Uh, so the Crossmans today and the Gamos are talking about 19 and a half, 19.9 inch barrels. Uh, <clears throat> but the reality is when you take some of these parts off, you'll see they come up a little short. I don't like that. Uh, I like some of these uh, air guns these days that are shooting uh, 30 inch long barrels. Now, that's an accurate gun. Okay, uh, we're gonna see what kind of group these two guns, Gamo and Crossman, shoot. Well, I've got two people, uh, our producer, Sadir, and uh, my wife, Dr. Paula, reminding me we have to keep these under 30 minutes or viewers disappear on us. Uh, so anyway, this was the Gamel. This was the Crossman. There's two pellets going through here. You kind of see that when you look at the other side of the target. But uh, take my word for it, two in here. You see a grouping here. The Gamel is slightly better. I still think both guns are very, very good. I think they both group well, and uh, the Gamo's got a little newer uh, piston in it. Uh, they both had about 500 rounds, maybe a thousand shot through them. And uh, I won't tell you which one shot the crows, but uh, they, uh, they're very identical. Velocity, the works. Uh, let me remind you that if you liked the video, there was something valuable, give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to be in that first group that gets to notice that these videos are out, I think we've got about 74, 75 of them out right now. Um, be sure to subscribe. And uh, remember, I answer all the comments, so ask any questions you have, leave comments. I actually enjoy them. Other than that, keep in mind, You want to stay safe, you want to stay silent, you want to stay sharp, and uh, if one was above all the others, it's safe. Stay silent.